The one thing about Abdullah is he has a very high offensive gear, you know, hence why he ran 10 racks in a match. I think it was in the round of 64 stage, I believe, if, if I remember correctly. But and that's what really keeps him in the match, no matter the scoreline. Because I, what I saw last night against Max Lechner is, is maybe a guy that kind of, I wouldn't say ever gave up. That's not where I'm going at all, but kind of gave in to the nerves a little after the score was a, a pretty big deficit and got the arm pretty loose and uh, came with some shots at the end. Carl Boys has hot footed it from the studio to join us. What do you think, Carl, are going to be the keys for Al Yusuf as he tries to pull off a big upset here? I think the start of the match is, is key for Abdullah. Al, Al Bin Ocean will know that as well, and he'll know the importance of this table layout and keeping Abdullah in his chair. Well, Carl, I was just commenting that the one thing I see about Abdullah, and probably Alvin's very aware of it, very offensive, like a high offensive gear, right? That's why we saw those comebacks and we saw some some packages put together by Al Yusuf. So maybe some nerves gets him at the beginning, but if he settles in, he certainly broke the balls great this week and, and can put some heat on Alvin. Alban Ocean started his defense of the title with a couple of very comfortable wins, really. Loho Sum, 9-3. Daniel Massiol, 9-1. Perhaps his toughest test came against Mats Schietna of Norway. He really refused to go away. Ocean put in a strong finish to prevail 11 please. You could see him checking the brown seven because we are playing all ball fouls. One thing very good for for Alvin, and not so much I think the nerves, but just really the table itself, the break maybe. Nobody spent more time on the main table than Alvin this week, and deservedly so, right, being the reigning champion. Yeah, that's just what we were kind of talking about in the studio. You know, you've got one man out there who's got no experience in this arena, and then the other man, the man at the table, well, he's got more experience than anyone in the game out there. A uh, little tester going forward with the cue ball. Kind of punched it. Didn't really stroke the ball at all. And that's a nervy thing, right, to begin the match. That's why I said a bit of a tester going forward with the cue ball. He could have laid up and taken the cut on the seven, but you could see the cue ball didn't have a whole lot of spin on it, right? So that's a little quick delivery. Does he play this bank or does he just lay him behind the nine, Carl? He's going behind the nine. And he's really one of the best at those types of shots. Amazing. Really, really good at the speed. And there you can see Abdullah's hooked. Yeah, but this is what he needs, right? A few opportunities, even though he's snookered. A lot better than not getting to the table at all. I'll try to come two rails behind this, about a medium speed. Got to be careful of the scratch. Oh, he's hit this nice. Maybe not how he wanted, but a good speed separation. This is cuttable, I think. I think it was you and I yesterday, Carl, that talked about when you're kicking at the ball, a lot of times it's all about the speed, right? Enhances your chances. It was a good pop, weren't it, in the end? It was very, very thin, that one. Got a little bit fortunate with the cue ball, but it was all about pocketing the ball. There you see, look how thin that was. Yeah, and I think very similar to a shot that he opened a match yesterday with that we talked about. Most players put a lot more speed on that thin cut shot, so pretty good, pretty good sign for Alvin here early that he's pretty calm.
took him a couple of goes, but he's got there in the end. Alban Ocean, the reigning champion, leads Abdullah Al Yusuf by one rack to nil. Two. This man's Alvin picked Ocean up quite a few of them in recent years, nil. and he leads one nil. Oh, that's the break off he's looking for. I know it's not going to produce a shot this time, or at least I don't think so, but pretty good delivery right there, huh, Carl? Yeah, he's, he's going down the middle, and we all, we've seen Shane breaking kind of this way, and we spoke about it early in the week, didn't we, JJ? We feel like this is definitely the break to, to go with. Now, this is a funny shot. No real definite path to get to snooker. He could play off the right side of the one, banking the one up, and kind of slide the cue ball into the three delicate. You know, with the pink four being there, that's a big ball for the snooker. I think the bank shot does go as well. Looks like he's trying to cue off the left side of the one. I'm not sure where to really travel the cue ball off the left side, though. I think he's trying to get that. Well, there, he's just played a good one, hasn't he? Yeah, and he's played a beautiful cue ball. It may creep behind the eight. Oh, and it did just enough, cutting off that easy kick at the one, I believe. It's real close. If he can get up behind this ball, coming to the top rail with the cue ball. Now, the thing is, he'd want to come in this with a lot of left spin. Otherwise, he'll be cutting the one, and the cue ball will, will kind of get away from him. This is what Albin does so good at the table. Extension, please. Yeah, watch out here now. Depending on the speed, he, he may not get a rail here with, you know, if he gets up behind the one full, the one may go into the purple or the three and not get a cushion. Uh, that's the one I was afraid of, hitting it thin. So the safety from Albin has got him back to the table. It's not an easy layout. This is the key shot of the rack, but this is what I was just talking about. Time and time again, puts his opponent in trouble and just waits for his opportunity. Yeah, and I think he's close enough to this. He can really pull the cue ball to a couple rails to short side on the three at least get to to where if he can't go offensive on the three he has the safety uh, it's going to be a nice speed i think uh, that's perfect yeah that that shot there jj is the shot where abdul's probably going to struggle more right as opposed to albin yeah albin with that constant calm delivery Extension, right and he's really leaving off where you know or, or coming back where he left off yesterday against Filler. Yeah, knocked out a couple of former champions yesterday. Having seen off Torsten Homan. Got into a very strong position there. The German did stage a little bit of a late rally, but there was never any real prospect of turning it round. And Ocean won 11-5. I like the one rail shot there, keeping it simple. And really, he's kind of gained the pace of the match early here, right? I mean, kind of feel like it's an Albin's pace right now. And that's the difference between him and some of the other big European stars like Filler and Shaw. They'll blow you away in no time at all with an endless succession of break and runs. Ocean, it's a much more patient approach. It's about finding a way. Mixing up all the elements of an all-round game. Yeah, and I really think certain players, a little short of his mark there, so may have to cheat the pocket. But certain players, I think their tempo around the table really sets up for their technique a little bit. Can he cheat this a little? If he can't, if he has to go forward, this is a little problem.
another example there of the pace. I'm not saying it was the most difficult shot, but still the ball just rolls perfect for the eight again. Yeah, he really understands the slick table. You really have to trust the rollout of the bed. Wins the right. So a very patient, controlled start from Alban Ocean. And he's carved out a 2-0 lead over Abdullah Al Yusuf. No Rock pool, three. and you just watch him play. I've been ocean to break. That's two like Kelly in entered the match, right? He's always there. It seems like two nil. He leads. Now, a little frustration there, and I think maybe just because he had the side spin on the cue ball a little bit. Didn't want that left English. Good thing is he can leave it behind fairly quickly with this nice starter on the three. Yeah, funny little angle he's got, hasn't he, there? Yeah, but he's such a good manager at the table, right? Like, he's not going to get ahead of himself and try and really warp this three in. He's just going to stun out and take the cut on the four. Oh, he did go forward. Similar to that shot that he kind of stunned earlier. He didn't quite get the re rotation on the cue ball. Yeah, and the, the ball went in a little bit fat, Extension, didn't it, off the rail. It didn't go in clean. And he surprised me there. Extension, please. With the five being so available, I thought he would just kind of stun out to the cut on the four. That shot Albin's just attempted for me, Shane Van Bonen is the best in the world at that shot. He plays that shot so good, doesn't he? Yeah. And of course you didn't play years ago, right? But today's equipment, I think you see that shot more than you did, you know, when I started playing pool with the older, slower felt, it just wasn't used as much. And the scary combination about Alvin Ocean is of course the extreme talent, but the hard work. Uh, not only you know away from the match, but during the match, it's just a, it's a tough combination to beat. Well, he builds his whole life around the game, doesn't he? Very into his fitness and his running, psychology, diet. Just bumping the eight over here, taking the shot on the six. Yeah, what a lot of people don't realise is. Probably 10, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, when Albin was sort of coming into the game on the Euro Tour, he was an angry player. He used yeah. to throw his cues. No, I, I watched it. Yeah, yeah, he was brutal. Yeah, and we still get glimpses of that from time to time. He said himself, though, that he clearly plays his best when he manages to keep those instincts under control. Yeah, well, we're glad he has a little bit of a chink in the armor, right? But everything he, he gets is well deserved, that's for sure. Oh, beautiful stroke there. Made that look much easier than it really was. Well, it's all been one way traffic so far.
Someone's going to get their hands on that World Championship trophy tonight. But where is it going to be heading? Back to Thank Austria, you, for Kuwait, Greece, Ocean to break. maybe the US of Last year it went to Austria in the form of this man, Alban Ocean. And he's in total control of this semi-final. That's the break he's looking for, JJ, right there. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you, you hit the line with the cue ball, like, you know, where he's breaking from, that's the flush hit on the one. And pretty unfortunate, really, to get snookered. Push out ball. Yeah, that's like perfect timing. And I think that's what he discussed a, a few days ago as far as his break he wants to see. Now we're going to get a, a good look at Abdullah here in a moment after the push out. And when you played and what I was always taught is at this level, you rarely ever pass the push out. I, I mean, occasionally, I guess it does happen. But I think for a guy like Abdullah, he's got to seize the moment a little bit at times, right? Yeah, he, he can't afford to just sit there and hope things happen. He's got to really take the uh, extension, please. The initiative and especially three deep, three zero down to to Albin. You've got to try and make something happen. So this is going to be an interesting rollout. Yes, it is. A nine ball at this level, of course, the best level in the world. It's not much of a an exchange kind of game. You're not going to see very many games where the guys get to shoot multiple times a piece, but those types of games aren't going to benefit Abdullah overall anyways, I think. I think it's going to be him sitting uh, Albin in the chair a little bit. Well, if he can pop this in the bottom left and hit the six full, it's worth a go. Yeah, I'm wondering what, what else maybe Alvin had in mind. He can also chip the one ball towards the six. Maybe use the cue ball. Behind the nine? Yeah, a behind bit. the nine. Maybe something like that, so. Yeah. You could shoot the one and two, the three, and follow to the side rail and down behind the nine as well. Looks like he's playing some type of safety. Playing your shot, Carl. All speed control, and it looks pretty nice. Frustrating for him, though, isn't it? He's dreamed all his life, I'm sure, of playing in a big match like a World Championship semi-final, and here we are in the fourth rack. He hasn't had a chance to get stuck in yet. Been restricted to just trying to contain his illustrious opponent so far. I like him taking on that shot, though, even though it was delicate. Pass drop. You won't see that very often. Ball in half. Start the clock, please. These good safety shots that the players Ooh. play often result in good things happening, and there you see as the cue ball falls off the table, the safety from Abdullah is giving ball in hand. Yeah, just like our first two opening racks with the safeties from Alvin, got those, those two wins. I'd be aggressive drawing over close to this two ball myself. Yeah, just like that. So our first proper look now at Abdullah Al Yusuf in this semi-final. <coughs> it's not a stage anyone would have been expecting them to reach. Came in seeded 50. I was wondering, I, I may have played for the angle here instead of trying to come back into perfect because you could get yourself in a real funny position if you ended up short, and that's exactly where he's at, I think. a nice shot. It's going to overrun a little bit, but now he's getting a little funny. He did lose a match earlier in the championship. His second match ended in defeat to Oliver Shulnoki, so he had to go to the loser's side. Got through it. You mentioned that comfortable win over Moritz Neuhausen, 11 racks to one. Does he have to go short side on the six right here? 
Yeah, I was kind of thinking. Oh, he's that. overcut this. He's missed it, though. He's missed the five. This was all because he knew the line was heading towards that six. Yeah. Of course, he shouldn't have missed the five, but that all started getting out of line a little bit on that three ball. And I thought it was a little bit of a funny shot getting on the three. A little bit of a funny shot here. Can't really get to the right side of the cue ball. Oh, the spin going to take. How nice is this? That might be just about the best shot we've seen in this semi final so far. So let's look at it again. Absolutely perfect judgment. I'm looking pretty ominous now. These are the racks that hurt when your opponent makes a mistake and you steal the rack at the end. Abdullah, well, he's in a tricky spot now. Yeah, there wasn't that much he could have done about it earlier on, but he had his chance here. Wasn't able to take Alvin it, Ocean. and Alvin Ocean has capitalized to the full, so forcing the cue ball off the table didn't prove costly for him in the end. Alvin Ocean stretches his lead to 4-0. Here's maybe trying to take his spot, but that does nothing but good for Austrian pool. Maybe you, JJ, after yeah. your little run at the Moscone Cup. I'll tell you what, I'm not a, I'm not a bad doubles partner, though. Oh, okay, he's staking a claim here. Yeah. I say, listening. yeah, it's like he's advertising his services here. <laughs> yeah. Give me, give me a, a 24 hours to hit a few balls, <laughs> just like the Moscone. It's the opposite to you, Carl. When I asked you about the World Cup, you were playing it down. Yeah. I sometimes I always think that's the best way. Yeah, right. Well, in America, they say the squeaky, gil, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? <laughs> so. Must be a hard watch for Max Lechner, knowing that for so much of last night, it looked like he was going to be in this semi final. Yeah, that would have guaranteed an Austrian in the final, which would have been fine by uh, by these two guys, that being Alvin and Max. But Abdullah did his thing, took advantage of a few mistakes coming down the end. And the funny thing for Max, it wasn't so much like super glaring mistakes. It was just misposition a couple times coming down the end. And then and then Abdullah uh, took full advantage. Yeah, this is an individual sport and I think there'll have been a, a little piece of Albin that was kind of glad Abdullah to the semis. That would have been a tricky little match playing Max. Oh, well, yeah. You know, it's probably one of the extremes in that match, meaning maybe Max is, gets very uncomfortable playing Alex, but most likely he's going to be very, uh, excuse me, not Alex, but Alvin, he's going to be very comfortable playing Alvin overall. Yeah, and you you so watched that match all, all the way to the end, Jeremy. And just to remind us against Lechner, it was nine four and then seven in a row. Yeah, I believe that's that was the ending. Of course, I was watching Shane and keeping up with that other match as well. But and Abdullah put a few racks together, which he's done the entire event. That's how he's in the semifinal. It's looking increasingly likely he's going to need to do something like that to stem the tide. Really has hardly featured yet in this match. And Ocean is a few balls away from being almost halfway to victory already. Yeah, and he's uh, he's only pocketed three balls in this match so far, that being Abdullah. So Alvin doing exactly what he wanted, keeping full control. Second break and run then for Ocean. He's such a perfectionist. But even he has got to be pleased with how this is turning out so far. Alvin Ocean stretches his lead to 5-0.
Colt the American made it for him. Rack six, Albin Ocean to break, leading five racks to nil. Yeah, and hats off to Nicholas. He had a super tournament here. First time really in the big stage. Well, he keeps tracking the one like that. It's going to be a long, kind of short day for <laughs> Abdullah in a sense. It'll feel long. And he gets a little bit more movement on the one just because he pulls the cue ball out a little bit off, off that side rail, gets a little more of a you know, heavier hit on the one ball. I mentioned earlier that Al Yusuf actually lost a match earlier in this championship before getting back on track through the loser's side. Well, Ocean actually took that route to the title last year. Roberto Gomez beat him early on. So he had to win a match on the loser's side to make the last 64 and then really took off. Beat Torsten Homan, Mieszko Fortunski. Comfortable wins over Skylar Woodward in the quarters and David Alcady in the semis. Tough final against Omar Al Shaheen, though. 9 7 down. And then won six racks in a row. I'm not sure he can straight draw the cue ball here. If, if he can't, he's got he's to work this ball around the nine, maybe a couple rails. I'd like to see him have to do that, really, just because I, I love watching him play the cue ball so well. It looks like he can cheat the pocket and draw the cue ball on a straight line, though. Even that shot, JJ, it's just nice where the ball's finished, isn't it? Just makes this next shot just nice and easy. Cue ball's going to come away from the rail. You know, we always talk about how the game has changed a little bit through the years. And, you know, some things are fairly standard still, but I really think the game's more about being very efficient with the open table. You don't see clusters as much because of the break, and, the, you know, the guys have gotten so good at the break and whatnot. But I think this guy's about the epitome of that efficiency. Yeah, and we're seeing both sides of his game here, aren't we? We had those earlier slightly more tactical racks that he controlled kind of reminds me of the mode he got in at the international last year really out there by himself just putting shot after shot together yeah that was in Virginia back in October one of several titles in a stellar 2021. Extension. Extension, please. So as I said earlier, it was about controlling it, keeping his opponent at bay, waiting patiently. But he's stepping things up a bit now. And as you can see, we've got the best seat in the house up here. I'm alongside Jeremy Jones and Carl Boys watching this absolute masterclass from Albin Ocean. And Carl, you've been at so many of these events as a player and as a commentator in recent years. What do you make of this whole setup here and how far the game is coming with venues like this? Oh, yeah, the, uh, the setup that match room always bring is, you know, obviously A class. And just looking at this final arena, you know, it really gets the hairs stood up on the back of your Thank neck. Thank you, Rack Seven. Unfortunately for Abdullah, he's got it all to do if he wants to win this title. Yeah, maybe he's got an even better seat because he's been largely a spectator so far. Trailing 
cue ball is spinning. Where's the one going to finish? Well, it's going to roll past the centre pocket. Well, like all the greats, they stay aggressive, but I think a safety right here at 6-0 probably doesn't want to start, you know, Abdul off with something easy, right? Oh, yeah, he's got his opponent right on the ropes, so keep him there. Yeah, and he's got too much cover with the 2, 3, and 9. He can chip the one down below to the bottom round, bring the cue ball a couple rails behind the 8, I'm guessing, anyways. Could cut at this, though. Don't think so, but... Yeah, no way he can cut at that, being that elevated. Uh, a little light on the speed, so maybe... Now it should be okay. Yeah, I'm sat in line with the shot, and there's no gap, so he's got to be kicking at this ball. Yeah, he can kick underneath the nine with spin. He can come two rails off the long rail with spin. On the slick table, you can't really depend on the second rail to grab the English, though. So, extension, please. Believe it or not, a lot as simple as this kick is, sometimes it's missed. Again, though, it's frustrating. He's getting to the table, but it's only to try and figure his way out of a conundrum. But can't really complain about that now because he did have a chance and wasn't able to take it. It sounds harsh, but that's the reality at this level. Wants to be careful with the scratch. Oh, is oh. it good, hasn't he, JJ? Yeah, beauty there. Good shot, Abdullah. <laughs> yeah, he's not been handed much in the way of opportunities to really get stuck in. But he may have carved one out for himself here, depending on how Ocean responds. And that's exactly what he has to do, just like the rollout earlier. He has to take on, even if it's not an offensive shot, he has to take on, you know, the kicks, the safeties. He has to be aggressive with them, right? Please. Try to hit them as well as possible. Now, can, is he looking at swerving at this ball? between the nine and the two, maybe trying to bank the, the one ball back down the table. I think that's what he's trying. He could also play it a little softer, just split the balls, bide a bit of time. Oh, he could swerve it, not too bad, couldn't he? Yeah. yeah. I think well, he was attempting your shot, wasn't he? Trying to bank it back down the middle of the table, I think. Touchy little one ball to get started because he does have to move the cue ball some, so. Small little angle going into the side. You hate to say it, but it, I think we all kind of know it's now or never, right? Yeah, exactly. He's already had one opportunity to start making an impact. Really can't pass up another one. Well, that's surprising. I thought that was a, a makeable shot there. Of course, a beautiful safety, but... Yeah, at first I thought it was a lot tighter than th the angle we was just being shown. Then yeah. I actually thought that was very makeable then. But maybe if you just don't fancy it, you're trying to wait for an easier opportunity. But that might not come. Albin's going to be kicking at this. He will hit the one ball. Yeah, and it's something about when you're kicking at the one, of course, there's more balls on the table to get safe. That's why you'll see the players so many times have exchanges on the one ball doesn't take much to get safe. Well, this has worked out. Not an easy position shot getting on the two, but. And he's shown a lot of patience there. This For is a, a player who's 6-0 down, taking him more than one shot. It's been a bit of a exchange to get to this point. It's very easy to under hit this type of shot and Leave yourself long and funny on the two. He's actually playing this with draw. I like draw, actually. I, I mean, just because this table doesn't want to bounce that well for you with the top English, so I, I thought draw was okay. I think he's played it pretty smartly as well, right? Making sure he may not get perfect on the two, but he wasn't ever getting snookered that way, right? So... This is a tester, though. He's already missed a five ball in this match. He's 6-0 down. 
you just knew, didn't you? You just know they're the shots. You know, when you've played this game, you know in funny little angles and you've not had much table time. They can really test the metal and test the mind, test the back arm. Yeah, and these are worrying signs, aren't they? Yeah, and, you know, Abdullah, he's got a really nice stroke, just like Carl said, hasn't had the time at the table just yet. So maybe a little bit, a little more stunned there than he wanted, maybe. Well, it's a familiar story, isn't it? When your opponent is going into a match knowing he's very much the underdog, this is the way to do it. Keep him in his chair early on in the match, build a lead, put the doubt in his head. Don't let him settle. Yeah, and Alba knows as well as anyone that, you know, it is an extended race to 11, which is awesome, right? But still, with the game of nine ball, it can get away from you quickly. So even though he's a favorite, it's not in a race to 11, what's it going to be? 5%, 10% max? It isn't going to be some massive favorite. Maybe the setting makes it a little bit more of a favorite than than a, maybe the outer tables. Yeah, he's bound to feel a bit uncomfortable, Al Yusuf. And he hasn't had any opportunity really to change that, but that's largely down to him because he's been in a couple of times and had bad misses. When you play in these big tournaments, obviously we start with 128 competitors it can be very easy to go undercover and go deep in these pool tournaments. I don't mean easy as in it's an easy thing to do, but you're on the outside tables, there's plenty of other matches going on. You're not in the limelight, you're not getting interviewed, and all of a sudden you find yourself here on the last day, and this will feel like a different tournament for Abdullah now. And the winning Alban line is just racks. starting to creep into view for Alban Ocean, the reigning champion is four racks away from a place in another world final. It's very you, pleased Rackets. with what he's done. Alvin Ocean to break leading seven racks. wanted to end on too low a note. At least get a couple of racks. 11-0 be something that might just take away from the memory just a touch. Well, the thing is, he may not get back to the table. I mean, not the best break off right there as far as what he wants, but Seems to be getting a lot of shots after the break. We're going to get to see a, a pretty sweet one here, elevated over the five. He does have a shot at the two, but he's going to have to hit a one heck of a shot to come two rails for the three. Not going to back off here, though. He played a huge amount so far this year. The highlight of 2022 from before this week was that win in the Extension. Premier League. Extension, please. Formats like that, as we saw in the Championship League at the same venue last year, are just so well suited to him. He doesn't always start tournaments particularly well. He finds a way, staying in it, and then finding his best at the end. And he's such a manager, like right there, of course, he hit the ball beautifully, but he managed knowing he's not going to try and get too much out of the shot. It's one thing in pool, you know, it's so similar to golf, but we don't have that caddy to remind you of a few things. You have to do it yourself. So you going inside English here? I would be very surprised, but he might well be. Oh, back and forth. He's played two shots in the last two racks where people will be watching just thinking, oh, just that's okay, but the positional shot in the last rack on the two to the three could easily go wrong. Oh, yeah. For a lot of guys, and that shot there. And of course, we don't want to look beyond this this match, of course, but you know, does it do Alvin Ocean a lot of benefit to win easy here in the semifinal? 
doesn't matter. He's got all the experience in the right, world. Right, right. Doesn't matter. He's doesn't won matter. it all kind of ways, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter. You well, know. we have to talk about something, Carl, at 7-0. Yeah, well, to zero, well so. I was just going to say, you know, obviously you've played in Moscow and you've played in the recent one. And playing out there, it's, just, it's all about the moment. And like you say, you know, his management around the table is just, it's just amazing to see. i tell you one thing we can talk about is a new record that he's likely to set in the next 20 minutes, half an hour. Since this championship began, nobody has ever been in the final of it four times. Well, in addition to his two titles, Ocean has also lost a final. So if he wins this, he'll be the first player ever to play in the final of this championship on four occasions. Well, you learn something new every day. Did you know that stat, JJ? No, I didn't. You're slacking, JJ. Well, it kind of makes sense to me, though, because <laughs> I know Earl has three wins, and Earl, when he gets to the finals, rarely ever loses. Okay. So, so that kind of makes sense to me that he hasn't ever lost in the final, that being the Pearl. Yeah, four players have been in the final three times. Strickland, Ocean, Johnny Archer, who won two of them, and Ralph Suke, who won one. Oh, another break and run with a lot of quality. And you think the lag isn't important? I know it's a race to 11, winter break, but oh, starting off in the control means, means, uh, means a lot to me. So he's won eight racks now, and half of them have been by means of a break and run. Talk about you need the pool break, gods or racks to the rolls, but... Well, Albin's proving a little something there, right? Yeah, right. He's saving the rules for the finals, maybe. <laughs> but he's really tracking the one nice. He's keeping the cue ball fairly contained on the break. Oh, that's the one he wants. That's the one he wants right there. And uh, hopefully the pink four has opened up a shot on the one. I like to see him go offensive here, but it looks like the four's got it covered up. Long rail bank with a little draw cover here, Carl. Yeah, score line helps maybe his decision, but no doubt he'll just keep the uh, keep the handcuffs. Yeah, I'll just do it. Just another nice safety shot, lock him up, keep the heat on. Yeah, he'll probably let's see. Shoot through the one, trying to slow roll behind the pink. What does that look like? Overcut the one maybe and run the cue ball. I think I like the first shot. Maybe shooting through the one, just going directly behind the pink and let Extension, the one please. come down the middle of the table. You can almost cut the one to the yeah, right. To the <laughs> I'm, I'm, like it's... I think if the three and the eight weren't covering the two a little bit, he could run the cue ball. I think he cuts the one. Could he send the one round two, three rails and use all the balls on the right? Yeah, that's what he's played. He's done over to the two, get the one round yeah. the table. Yeah, I like that shot. Yeah, pretty simple. In the back of his mind, he had the nine ball, he had the eight. He knew he was going to make contact to the two, so that could play a little role. And it has to be said, it's, it's worked out good, that for Albin. Yeah, you can see an edge, but this is an edge. Well, it's not terrible if he can get at it now. From this distance, you can't add the right English. You have to just go with a straight high ball. So, And like Carl said, Alvin definitely please. was trying to contact that two ball and get the two to maybe not only slow the cue ball down, maybe bounce out for even a more of a snooker, right? So. Good things can happen if he hits this thing and gets the cue ball back up towards that two. So yeah. He's got to be happy there, even though it's going to sell out a shot. Pretty good hit. Can he see the potting angle? I don't think so, actually. Maybe with like a dragging right spin, like a heavy right spin, he can kind of subtly swerve around the eight and throw the one ball in. Yeah, he's elevating the cue a little bit. Great camera angle there. 
Just a flick of right English. Yeah, watch the cue ball travel down the table here. You'll see it spinning. So he's overspun the cue ball. Is he going to scratch? Oof. No, and this is not an easy shot at any time of any match, let alone eight racks down when well, you've potted hardly any balls. Yeah, and when you've missed easier ones than this already. Yeah, and it, he has to shoot it with a lighter speed as well. He can't afford to go forward with the cue ball with all that traffic. And last night, I did see a couple misses from Abdullah when he had to roll the ball. Are you going to elevate? Wow, okay. It's a good shot. Yeah, that's the strength I saw, though, last night. When he, when he got to deliver the stroke, he was fine. A couple times when he had to roll it, not so much. Almost like a, a baby jump shot. Yeah, right. If he does lose heavily, he might look at it and say, well, he can learn from the experience. But really, what has he learned? Alban Ocean's a good tactical player. He shouldn't miss routine balls. Not much lesson there. So is there anything he can take away from it? Well, we don't know what he's feeling, right, or thinking. That's what he's going to learn about, what was in his head that maybe caused a miss versus physical, something physical. That's the only way the players really learn. It's really about the mental side of things in such a big situation. Okay, doesn't really want to fall straight here, even though the six is near the side. It is a little tricky. It's not entirely out of the blue that he's had this good run. Did well at the Turning Stone Classic right at the start of the year, had a third place finish there. Well, he's come to the States quite often through the years. Mainly have seen him, of course, in the Virginia area, but nice stroke there. Oh, that kiss may have helped him, actually. I think he was going to kind of get in a funny position, but. Oh. Is this a good position he's in? Well, he's got a bank, at least. I think he was going to get on top of the six otherwise. Well, it's been a good effort, this. Yeah, the crowd giving Abdullah a clap there. They don't want to see him lose 11-0, do they? They want to see a little bit of a fight back. Yeah, he's passed up a couple of opportunities to get that first rack on the board. This wasn't straightforward. He's held himself together well. And finally. Still got a huge task if he's holding on to any thoughts of actually winning Thank this you, match. Thank you, number 10. And this is actually Abdul Al-Yusuf break, trailing by eight right The first break one. shot he's had in the whole match. Well, that right there is a huge thing for, for him. Uh, as a pool player, when you get to break the balls, the adrenaline gets going. You kind of believe you can overcome anything. He has certainly run a bunch of racks in this event. Is the two ball going to fall? And here's the start, Carl. Just got a the old cliche ball at a time. The first thing he's got to do is try and run this rack out, win the breaks, put a bit of a three or a four pack together, just ask Alvin a question. That's going to be his aim. Tricky little shot coming out of the pocket here. He doesn't want to get thin on the three. Oh, nice speed there. Really nice. We saw another man from Kuwait involved on the final day last year, Omar Al Shaheen, who ended up as runner up. Al Yusuf wasn't his partner in the World Cup last year, but may well be 
in Essex this summer. Well, the evidence of what he's done, okay, not in this match, but in the earlier rounds, they could be a formidable Kuwaiti side. Yeah, Carl knows as well as anyone that uh, doubles is really about the mixture, how you complement each other. Of course, you have to be in a little bit of stroke and and have the game right. But if you're comfortable with your partner, it means a whole lot. Yeah, Kuwait actually knocked out Poland in the first round of the World Cup last year, which was a very good result. They were then beaten by the eventual winners, Germany, in the last 16. I'm a bit fortunate that one fell, I think. Caught a lot of that side rail. And we'll see. Both these guys have broke from the left side rail, their left side rail, or right side looking at the camera. But yesterday I never saw a dry break from that position. Saw a couple of dry breaks from the opposite rail, so I'm interested because, you know, SVB's been breaking from that other rail, and I wonder what the outcome may be as far as balls on the break. But there is some difference of that break position. All sorts of challenges to get this far. This, though, is surely his biggest yet. Took a little speed off there, Carl. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but... Yeah, he's made a lot of balls as well, hasn't he? Yeah. Unfortunately, no shot on the one. You take a little speed off that one doesn't get past that side as much getting around the table and caught the point. And I've played matches where I've caught the point with that one. It seems like every break shot it does the same thing. Touchy little safety here only being able to see a portion of the one. You would say it's an easy one to get behind the pink but I think speed control. Kind of crucial. Looks good. Yeah, beauty. He's still in this match, you know. I know Al, it's been all about Albin Ocean and Abdullah's missed that five ball, didn't he? But he's still there. This is more than achievable. Just needs a shot after this kick shot and then some form of package Extension, that we please. often talk about at pool, a three or a four pack. And Listen, you, you can still be in this match, no problem. Absolutely. As long as you're still out there, you can still win it. Can't win it back in your hotel room or in the bar or doing an interview. As long as you're still on the table, anything's possible. And I just think these scenarios are hard to dodge after going down 8-0. Alvin kicks so well. He does so many good things. I think Abdullah's going to have to run some racks. I think Alvin's going to make it tough otherwise. Well, a little bit of uh, an opening. Nothing easy here with the cue ball near the rail, but I kind of manage here and just roll this in and take the long shot on the pink. Yeah, it does have an angle, doesn't it? So just pop your ball, let the cue ball work over to the middle of the table. 
he's elevating. I'll tell you what, he stayed pretty loose, even though he trilled, you know, 8 0 at one time. Well, we always talk about it, don't we? The importance of getting that first rack. He had to wait a very long time for it, but he looks noticeably more comfortable now. Yeah, he's got to go two rails just right by that seven, it looks like. Is he coming three rails tight? Pulling the ball, yeah. Nice shot. Oh. On the slick table, you never really imagine going too tight. Like you're coming two rails in the in the side pocket like a club table, right? No. Eight zero down. Looking like he's gonna win this rack, so he's won the last three. Yeah, and he must just feel such a sense of relief. I think we were all thinking this could be eleven nil. That isn't going to happen. Really, now, what's the worst that can happen? He's got a little bit of work to do here. Yeah, he's similar to an earlier game where he felt just a little off angle, so I have to put a little into this. And this is going to get a little 50-ish. This is a little test for Abdullah in this semi-final. Pop this ball and you're still in the match. Miss it and lose the rack. It's there. And all of a sudden, he's pulled off a hat-trick. Still got so much to do, but he'll be feeling so much better with each passing rack now. It's 8-3. Rack 12. An event which always Abdullah really underlines just how global trailing and international this sport is. And the man from Kuwait trails 8-3, but he's got some momentum. All right, he's made the one in the side. The two's going to be shootable. A little distance, of course, but another good starter. Listen, this is what we've been talking about. Winner breaks. These are the things that can happen. This is why I'm a big fan of the winner break. Hate the alternate break, in fact. Well, there's pros and cons to both, I think, but... Yeah, I knew you'd come with something like that, Jose, <laughs> just to ruin my moment. <laughs> Being politically sound. <laughs> Needs to find the gap. Oh, oh. Kind of let up on that. A little bit of desail on the downswing. And... Yeah, and all this momentum he's generated over the last few racks. That could really take the wind out of his sails. And, you know... If you'd said to him at the start of the match, you're going to get beaten heavily, which he may not yet, of course. He would have thought, OK, in playing Next Elbin Ocean, that could happen. But when he looks back, that's about three or four shots now that really he just could not afford. Some bad misses. Albin's got a tricky shot here. It's always quite unnatural when the two balls are so close together. He's got a nice angle to float over, though, so just pop the ball. Yeah, your perspective, right? You never get the perspective like you do when you get a little distance. Now he can follow his ball, it looks like, between the three, between the six and the eight. Does, or does he have to draw this between the six and eight? I thought he could follow it, maybe two rails out to the center. Albin's, you know, he'll appreciate the magnitude of this rack. Yeah, you, you're thinking he's 8-3 up. He's, he's all good, but he knows he's, he's been sat in his chair for the last three racks. And he, yeah. was, he looked like he was going to go 9-0 up with the swerve shot, wasn't it, on the one ball? Yeah, then Yusuf made a, a really nice shot in return on the one. But what it is when you're on the winter break at this level, which is the highest level in the world, when you're in the chair, even up 8-3, you know, you're in the cooker a little bit, right? <laughs> you're the one that's sweating it, no matter what the score is. Yeah, the other guy's just getting on with it. 
you have plenty of time to sit there and think bad thoughts. Well, as great as Alvin is, I mean, he's he's lost to lesser players with a lead before. That's for sure. So he knows what's possible. But this is important, isn't it? It's all about regaining the initiative here. Stopping Al Yusuf in his tracks. Yeah, and one of the a super nice guy. Abdullah, of course, but. Alvin doesn't want to see him at the table anymore this match. Yeah, had a little chat with Abdullah this morning. He's full of modesty and good manners. Absolute gentleman. Thank you, rack 13. Albin Ocean to break. Leading nine racks to three. And as Brendan Moore of Sheffield has outlined there, Albin Ocean is back firmly in control here. Abdullah Al Yusuf from 8 0 down, won three racks in a row, but then a bad miss on the two cost him rack 12. 9 3. Yeah, it was an important moment for Abdullah because. He kept Albin in his chair a little bit. He had a chance to get it to 8 4 and offering in a race to 11. You may get two chances to, to you know, form a comeback. One thing's for certain, he's only going to get one more chance if he's going to get any chance of a comeback, isn't he? Yeah, this first shot on the one, I don't know if the three goes by the eight. It looks awfully tight. So, a difficult opener here on the one. I think it does slide by the five, but not maybe an entire pocket to shoot at. But yeah, this opening one ball may tell if he's going to get. That's a great look. Uh, I think a portion of the pocket on the three, but probably a position please. play you want to avoid if possible. Can he draw this and get behind the three here for the side pocket, Carl? Like elevating the cue? Yeah, I think that's what he's going to try, isn't he? And the one ball is gonna have to go in off that rail, isn't it? We've seen the pockets have been generous this week, so his favourite to make the shot. Wait, wait, in a full pocket. Yeah, he got a lot out of that. I think, <clears throat> I think to make sure he drew past that side, he was trying to aim on the full side of the one ball, maybe. It's another example, though, of that is not an easy shot. He's digging down. The five ball is in his eye line. He's got to judge the pace. And, you know, he's very underestimating this. It's another shot where a lot of other players can make a mess of that. Well, we discussed it yesterday that, you know, percentages, he's as good as anyone. Uh, great cue ball. Pressure, of course, is something that I kind of think he revels in, really. But, uh, but his shot making on top of it, right? And nice. after that little burst from Al Yusuf, Ocean appears to be settling back into the measured, dominant, controlling mode he was in earlier in the contest. I always bring up, at least I feel like the game's not really about perfect. But I think Albin really display, displays it's about percentages. You know, I mean, it's just, just going to be a super solid guy just about every time he gets up to play. A little funny here. Maybe doesn't go forward with the cue ball too, too much. Yeah, I think that previous camera angle, it shows you it goes in the middle nice and easy. So. Yeah, he's okay. Yeah. I got a lot out of that.
played it with a little bit of left English just to keep the cue ball an inch or two more to the left, wasn't it? Didn't look, didn't look much, but... Yeah, that little manipulation helps, right? Yeah. And that's just a little instinct. You can feel it's just a little better that way, right? But, but when Albert, you know, like many when he, of the top players, when he starts to look like he's kind of making the same delivery on every shot, you better watch out. You're not going to get many open looks. So solid, isn't he? And after only about an hour and a quarter of play, Alban Ocean is on the hill. He leads Abdullah Al Yusuf 10-3 in the World Championship final. But he's got to get there first. He only needs one more rack. And his final break off here in the semi-final. Doesn't want to back off. That's about perfect. The one ball. He's really got a nice line on the one a lot, right? And this looks very bad for from for our friend from Kuwait. Yeah, this is the table layout Albin has got to create some history here at the World Pool Championships, as Michael alluded to before. He needs these seven balls to be the first player in history to make four finals. And it looks like he just comes across and plays the two in the lower left. No reason to really work the cue ball. The five is near the other side. The six is for the opposite side. So, barring something that I've never seen before, I think we're going to have our first finalist here in a moment. Yeah, Albin Ocean doesn't doesn't miss these for matches. It just doesn't happen. More chance of you buying a, me a drink, JJ, than I'll be missing these. Yeah, right. Just a little top English to the rail with the cue ball. You can see just to stop your ball. He's going to make sure he can reach it how he wants as far as shooting the seven. But Yeah, he's not the tallest of fellas, is Albin. Like JJ says, he'll probably just float down a little bit. Just stun across, and you can see the eight leads easily to the nine, which will lead Alvin Ocean to our 2022 World Pool Championship final. Carlo Beato was the last defending champion to get to the final on his return back in 2018. He probably just kills it here. He can come across. It's a bit of Extension, choice. Extension, please. It's been a great performance, this has to be said. Yeah, Abdullah's been a, a little bit shell-shocked out there, but Albin has done such a professional job here in this match. Abdullah Al Yusuf did stage a mini revival, but in the end, for Albin Ocean, it's been easy like Sunday morning. He's won